<laughs> so I think that that's a good place to segue because one thing I wanted to get your opinion on or your thoughts about is the current Ivy collaborations. And there's kind of been, you know, a couple different frames of mind about this, you know, so we have, for example, Brooks brothers, I believe last season, or maybe it was this season, they collaborated with Phila, I believe. And then we had LL Bean. They, um, they collaborated with Todd Snyder and most recently J press, um, collaborated with Todd Snyder. So what do you make of that? Do you think that this is an attempt on the part of those companies to survive by trying to appeal to a different market of consumers? Like, what, what do you make of it? It's interesting. I'm not privy to the actual, you know, strategic deliberation that's going on there, but it's, it's clearly an attempt to make it part of a part of a conversation, but I kind of think that uh, for J Press and the traditional customers, are they really going to to uh, to expand their customer base by doing these? I don't know. Uh, it's a gamble that I don't think they have much to lose, to be honest. I mean, how um, Todd Snyder kind of pioneered that model in the 2010s, right? That's sort of his. He was the one who who uh, launched this type of heritage collaboration models with J Crew in the 2010s, right? And that successful model that sort of, I guess they sort of saved Red Wing that way, I think. I think mean, Red Wing was like a Japan only brand at that point and work were in the US and they sold some weird stuff in Japan. And then I think this is how the story is that Todd Snyder sort of roped them in for J Crew, if I remember how the story went. Uh, but that was, of course, in the era where sort of the heritage wear was sort of very heavy. We're not really in that model anymore. We are now in a, in menswear where the where sort of the streetwear drop model is is reigning that's very different from the from the heritage notion i think so now it's basically a matter of um uh um getting uh getting a little bit more mileage out of the streetwear trend while you still can is how my interpretation of this um I'm not a crit critic of that, actually, in a sense. I think streetwear is where innovation has happened in menswear in the last few years. There's no denying that, I think. The uh, um, question is whether it has uh, the mileage in or the or the the, the creative juices left in it to, to, to do much more than it already has done. That is sort of street wearification of fashion. And uh, that's how I see it. I don't really actually read it as J press reaching out to a younger audience. I mean, they are, but I think it's more, um, how to, uh, try to squeeze the, the, the lemon of, of streetwear for a little bit longer, uh, which is sort of the only game kind of left in higher end uh, fashion, it seems. And I do think that has like a, I don't see it ending to be, to be fair, not because streetwear is independently of how good streetwear is objectively right now, but simply because there is a uh, streetwear is not a trend like other trends that will then come and go. It is kind of like an end stage of fashion, I think, in a sense of um, um, uh, it absorbs pretty much everything else in its path. It's not one trend that follows along another. So I guess we'll see this type of continued street verification. Some of it I like. I can't say I've bought anything of the collaborations you've mentioned. But it's it's undeniable. I, it is a an interesting way, like how Amy Leon Doré or these have, are doing these uh, are doing these uh, these fusions of of uh, or merger between the the classic menswear, Ivy style and and streetwear. There is you know parallels enough there. Um, but I am I don't have like too much incredibly interesting things or takes on those on those things. I just think that this is just the the model that's available right now to have 
a small sort of capsule as a collaboration between those things and you do a New York based photo shoot based on it. And then that's how you got, how it goes. Um, it is also, you know, an element of sameness that comes there, but <laughs> I think that's how it goes. Uh, it's no, there's no need to be overly critical about, about that, that this sort of, a, this is a way of defiling the, sanctity of jpress something seems very silly to me as long as those things that go away because J i cannot imagine a lot of jpress having too many customers in college age right now uh but there's also no way that this is going to be a, a way to save a brand that way it's just a way of positioning itself while with positioning this brand within a cycle of of uh of streetwear and they can easily get some some credit points maybe but i don't see that changing too much yeah. and i have no think that, solution to it <laughs> how that would work <laughs> <laughs> what do you think this is going to do for style or particularly ivy style if anything i don't know in terms of where ivy style is i mean i've been it's interesting to see for me for instance like discovering drakes as a brand like maybe five six four or five years ago five years ago was sort of a, a moment for me also to sort of okay this is how the the synthesis of like a lot of european styles and ivy is done right now i found that you know the, the classic drakes lookbooks from three four years ago or something were important to sort of okay that hammers home that message that the journey that i was on was basically sort of caught up with uh, within and and was you know possible you know? um but i don't see yeah i don't see that will that really would change I, I guess i don't have that much investment in like a canonical ivy style enough for me it's actually more of an um, for me ivy style is not separate from a broader american continuum of style it is one of sort of three sort of quintessentially three or four, maybe quintessentially American styles that I also, I very much enjoy. It's a, the Ivy style sort of Western style and uh, U.S. military style. And all of these have sort of different ins and outs vis-a-vis uh, -vis communications with, with Ivy style as well. So the way I see it, it basically is, uh in the maybe in the mold of i like america and america likes me this sort of appropriation of america sort of while i'm here not not that much different from traveling around the country to see lesser known parts and trying to uncover a sort of different historical dimension of american of american life that you can get by going to you know butte montana or something and see <laughs> and see like where the minor strikes happen and so on this idea of there are for me like acquiring and purchasing some classic american pieces is this type of philological historical work of appropriating um uh, something as as an outsider but precisely through experience and not through um yeah, internet inspiration. This is like a long slog in that sense. You have to, so for me, like classic, classic denim, some classic West, uh, some classic Western wear, um, and especially like acquiring for me, like the moment where for me it sort of it flipped the switch was when I was able to incorporate like military, vintage military stuff into my wardrobe and only then did i sort of get access to the to the sort of later stage more rugged ivy approach of the 70s that i also didn't really know about as a canonical style for them uh, and drake's by adding a lot of those english and even french elements sort of crystallized it for me that this was okay this is um uh, a moment that uh that sort of makes sense for me from depending to where i came from but not sort of as a, I never copied or went directly top down from anything I saw and, and got something. It felt natural to me to, to get into some of these things that has a, that is sort of anchored in American history. 